Bruchem Aboim. Welcome, everyone. Again, thank you for attending. Welcome to our home. The um, lecture today on the uh, My Thought is, again, a continuation of the lecture from last week. So, continuing, continuing last week's lectures of My Thought about Elo, the month that is dedicated to tshuva, repentance. As we mentioned in last week's My Thought, that we say daily in the evening prayer, Hasr Sutton Mufanenu Miyakarenu, remove the Sutton from before us and from behind us. Now, there's another opinion that states that the words Miyakarenu from behind us means that we ask God to not allow us to become despondent even after we have sinned. As the Holy Pashemtov stated, more than the side of evil wants you to sin, hmm, it wants you unhappy. The Sutton is well aware that if you are unhappy, then sinning is an inevitability. We need to know, we need to acknowledge that it was only our action that was bad. We can change our actions, even our mindset. Since at our core we are all good and decent people, endowed by our Creator with a, a godly soul that wants to serve our Father in Heaven faithfully. So how do we do tshuva? That is both real and substantive. First and foremost, we must take on a positive attitude. We must believe that we have not only the ability, but also the fortitude to change. We can do better. We need to beat the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, his own game. You know, he doesn't get us to rob a bank. First, he convinces us to steal a penny, and then he slowly helps us work our way up. We must learn to succeed from our Yetzirah. We must proceed on our path of tshuva, following his example, little by little. We need to feel successful, just like it states in Pirkei Avot. Ben Azai said, mitzvah goreret mitzvah, that one good deed brings on another good deed. So too, one success brings on more successes. For the most part, we are all sprinters. Many times we take on the challenge of bettering ourselves, but that lasts for only short periods of time. Then we give up and revert back to our old ways. It's much like dieting. Initially you lose the weight, but then invariably you put it back on. Dieting doesn't work. You have to change your eating habits. Now the Yetzirah is a marathon runner. He never gives up. We need to learn from his successes. We too need to be marathon runners. We can never give up even when we experience setbacks. We need to change something. We learn, need to learn from the past. Though we may fail at times, we must learn to do a little bit better each and every time, as it states in Proverbs. Kisheva yik pol tzadik v'kam. That a tzadik is someone who has fallen seven times but he gets up. So these 40 days have been set aside as days of repentance and reconciliation from the time that Moshe, Moses, went up on the mountain for the third time. He went up on Rosh Chodesh Elul, the first day of the month of Elul, and he stayed there until the 10th day of the month of Tishrei, Yom Kippur, all told 40 days. Though the sin of the golden calf was grievous, God was able to forgive them. Rashi in a portion of Kisiso states, that God says that I will forgive them for the sin of the golden calf, but every time that they sin in the future, then I must punish them, and that will then add some additional punishment for the sin. Well, you know, that to me doesn't seem like true forgiveness, especially coming from a loving and benevolent father. So I prefer the opinion of Rabbi Yaakov Dabin Amshano, who says that when God said, whenever they sin, I'll remember the sin of the golden calf to me, that just like I was able to forgive them for the sin of the calf, so too will I be able to forgive them for any and all sins that they commit in the future, no matter how grievous. So a major part of tshuva, of repentance, is the belief that God will forgive us. We just need to make a sincere effort and then stay the course. As Rashi states in the portion of Bullock, the derek she'adam rotsa lechas molichon in the way that a person wants to go, 
In that way, they heaven direct him. Now the second blessing of the 13 personal requests that we recite three times daily in our weekday Amida, the standing prayer, is Ashiva Shavtenu Ashiva Ashivenu Avinu Lesara Sapa uh, cause us to return our Father to your Torah. Initially, we turn to God in his capacity as our Father. We ask him to guide us on a path that will help us to conduct ourselves properly so that he will be able to forgive us for our sins. Now, for us to be successful, we must first and foremost connect to his Torah, our instruction manual. In order for us to succeed in our quest to serve God and overcome our evil inclination, we must have knowledge. There should not be a day that goes by without us learning some Torah. You know, I always suggest to my students that they keep a Hebrew book on their nightstand and that they should read at least three verses every night before they go to sleep. You know, it may not seem like much, but it keeps you connected and moving in a positive direction. Secondly, the verse continues with Carvenum Alcana La Voto Draw us near our King to your service. After we we connect to God our Father by learning and internalizing his Torah, we then need to serve him as our King. We do this through prayer. Prayer is referred to as Avodat Haled, the service of the heart. God wants us to not only serve him, but even more so, to do so out of love for him. As we say in the first paragraph of the Shema Yisrael, you have to ace Hashem Elokecha, and you shall love the Lord your God. Once we have connected with God through Torah study and prayer, both on the level of Father and King, we are now ready and able to and return us back to you in wholehearted repentance. Not just superficially, but a complete and meaningful return to a loving relationship with our Father, our King. More than we want His forgiveness, He wants to forgive us. As the verse concludes, Baruch HaTah Hashem, Harot Zed Blessed are you, Lord, who desires true penitence. Just like any parent, all that God wants is for us, His children, to be successful and happy in life. He never wants to punish us. Now, the third blessing of the third personal request deals with the forgiveness of both a father and a king. The word salach, forgive, is used with a father and is mentioned three times in the verse. The word mechila, pardon, is used only once and then in reference to a king. So a father forgives the sin. It is erased and completely forgotten, whereas a king pardons the sin. So the sin is forgiven but it is not forgotten. So the word salak, by the way, has a numerical value of 98, alluding to the forgiveness of the 98 admonitions, the so-called curses that Moshe gave to the people that are mentioned in the portion of Kisabo. You know, we build a shofar on 28 out of the 29 days of the month of El. 28 is the gematria, the Hebrew of the, 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 the miracle value of the Hebrew word koach, strength. The 28 days of blowing of the shofar is like an alarm clock that will hopefully awaken within us a feeling that we need to get up and actively become involved in preparing ourselves for the Yom HaDin, the Day of Judgment. You know, we can only accomplish this by using the power of our two hands, our Yad Yumin, our right hand, and our Yad Smol, our left hand. The right hand alludes to the power of the Yetza Tov, our good inclination. And the left hand, which alludes to the power of the Yetza Hara, our evil inclination. Now the Hebrew word Yad, hand, has a gematria, a numerical value of 14. Two hands, 14 and 14, equal 28. As I mentioned earlier, it is the numerical value of the Hebrew word Koach, strength. It is our mission in life to harness the power of both of our inclinations in our service of God Almighty. As it states in Tehillim and Psalms, Sur merah da'aseh tov, turn away from evil and do good. 
So during the month of Elul, we are preparing ourselves for the day of judgment, the Yom Hadin. But the question becomes, who judges whom? You know, we say that on this day God sits in judgment of all of mankind. But what I find interesting is that we judge others, including God, daily. But it is critical that we realize that how we judge others has a great impact on how God will judge us. There is a Hasidic belief that when you die, you have no recollection of who you are. You are told that you are a prosecuting attorney. You are given a brief and told that you must prosecute the individual who is seated on the stand in the courtroom. Who is that person? Hmm, you. If you are always kind and forgiving to other people, then when you prosecute yourself, you will do so with mercy and kindness. However, if you were judgmental and critical of others, then that will be how you will judge yourself. So train yourself to see others in a positive light. As Ramnachem Mendel of Kutz, the Kutzka Rebbe, would say, that insanity was put into this world so that one person can look at another and see him in a positive light, even though it may be completely insane. So are we punished because we sin? Or are we punished because of a lack of gratitude, our chorus of Tov, for all the goodness that God bestows upon us? It says in the portion of Kisavo, in the middle of the Tochacha, the admonitions, Tachat Avarata et Hashem Barov Kol. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with happiness and with a glad heart from an abundance of everything. We see with Achav, who was an evil king of Israel, he, in fact, he was an idol worshiper. Yet, when his troops went to battle, no one died. On the other hand, when Dabanamal, King David's troops, went to battle, men did die. But why? Our sages tell us because of the peace, brotherhood, and happiness that existed among Akko's followers. Whereas during the time that David reigned, that feeling of camaraderie did not exist. And then soldiers died. When God as a father sees that his children are happy and they are getting along with each other, then even if they disobey him, he does not punish them. However, if he sees that they are angry and contending with each other, hmm then he does punish them with what they deserve. This is much like a father of flesh and blood, who experiences much more pain watching his children arguing amongst themselves rather than arguing with him. We always need to remember that God is our Father. He loves us, and he wants us to succeed. There is no challenge that he gives us that we cannot overcome. We just need to believe and stay the course. We always need to follow the words of King David, Tevin Malach and Tehillim in Psalms, Ivdu as Hashem b'simcha, to serve God with joy. Even in the most trying of times, we must believe in our relationship with our Father in Heaven. We must believe that everything that we experience in life has a positive purpose. Though we may not be able to recognize all of God's blessings initially, but in the end, those experiences that we perceived in our life as bitter, in hindsight, we may come to realize, are what made us better. If someone really wants their prayers heard and answered by God, there's a simple recipe. Pray for someone else. Look around you. You are not the only one with problems, needs, requests, hopes, addictions, and desires that require God's assistance. Some requests are, are frivolous, though those really don't matter. But other requests are necessary for our health, children, marriage, happiness, even spiritual lows. When you pray for someone else who is experiencing similar challenges and difficulties, your prayers are recited with much more depth and sympathy. Now we read in the Torah that Abimavinu, Abraham our father, prayed for the members of Abimelech's household. When God closed all of their bodily openings as a punishment for him abducting Sarah. Sarah was 89 years old at the time in Baron, yet, when Abraham prayed for Abimelech's wives that they should be able to give birth, that prayer opened Sarah's womb, and she too was able to then to conceive and give birth to her son Yitzchak. When God sees that a person cares for someone else, 
Then he looks at that person's request and many times will answer them in the affirmative. You know, we can observe God's benevolence as a father in connection with the command that we fast on Yom Kippur. In the third book of the Torah and Vayikra, in the portion of Amor, it states, Ba'asr lachodesh hashvi hazeh yom hakippurim hu mikrei kodesh yelochem v'nisem es nafshosechem The tenth day of the seventh month shall be a day of atonement for you. It is a sacred holiday when you must fast. Then we see in verse 32, the word for fast is repeated. V'nisem es nafshosechem Batisha of Lachodesh, but Arab may Arab ad Arab, and you shall fast on the ninth day from evening until the next night. But the question has to be we only fast one day on the tenth, on the ninth day we eat. Why does the Torah use the same word Vinisim fast for both the ninth and the tenth days? The verse should say that one is commanded to eat on the ninth day and fast on the tenth day. You know, there's a precept that if a person were to fast for two consecutive days, the reward that one would receive for the second day of fasting would be many times greater than one receives for the first day. Now, the Talmud in Brachos asked the question, do we actually fast on the ninth day? In reality, we only fast on the tenth day. The wording is telling us that anyone who eats and drinks on the ninth day is considered by the Torah, by God Almighty, as if he fasted on both the ninth and the tenth days. Now, even if we are not commanded to eat on the ninth day, but given the fact that the next day we are commanded to fast, we would automatically eat more in preparation for the upcoming fast day. However, God Almighty, being a loving Father, uses the term v'inisem, fast, instead of oichel, to eat, so that our reward for fasting on the tenth day would be many times greater. So what is the bottom line? Change something. Not everything. Changing something may allow you to succeed. Changing everything is a recipe for failure. And that's exactly what the side of evil wants you to do. Fail. Then once you fail, he encourages you to become despondent. He wants you to give up. Once you do, sinning becomes an inevitability. Tshuva is much like trying to stop smoking. Most people do not have the perseverance to stop smoking cold turkey. So the best advice is to take just one cigarette out of each pack that you smoke. Don't smoke it. Then helpfully, little by little, one cigarette at a time, you may be able to kick the habit or, or at least cut back. You know, we have to approach our tshuva with logic. We need a game plan. It won't ha happen by itself. It is important that we see the significance of observing religious life with a positive attitude. Accentuate the positive so that the prohibitive and restrictive demands of religion will not take precedence over the positive. One should not only enjoy serving God Almighty, we should also consider it a privilege and an honor to have been selected for this special mission. So during this period of time, what should we pray for? Answer, pray for others, friends, family, and even strangers. But most of all, pray for the Holy Shechina, the divinity of God, so that it can return from its exile. Pray for God and the coming of Mashiach. No angel, no angel can contest a prayer that asks that the Shechina should no longer be in pain. The coming of Mashiach is like a blanket that will cover all of our needs, that will answer all of our questions and help us to overcome all of our challenges in life. So wishing you all a Kasiva Kasima Tova. May you and yours be inscribed and sealed for good. May you be blessed with a, with a sweet, safe, successful, happy, healthy, special year with the coming of Mashiach Sukainu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending. God bless you all. You should be happy, healthy, and safe. Again, God should make this a very special year for you and yours and answer all of your prayers in the affirmative. Again, Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for attending.